This is the 2022 Gen 3 Levo. All new frame, next level integrated display, and massively revised geometry. It's a mullet. It's longer and slacker than ever before and weighs in at 22 kilos. And when you hit your first corners, you know that this bike is built to rip. Beefy Fox suspension, all new frame kinematics and suspension tune. With 160 mil out the front and 150 on the rear, and geometry that's built to shred as much as you dare. Specialized has built its version of the ultimate electric mountain bike. And to me, it's a beautiful example of technology fused with exquisite riding capabilities. It's a masterpiece. And like all masterpieces, this doesn't come cheap. Starting at 8,750 pounds, up to this S-Works model at 13,000 pounds. This is the Generation 3 Specialized Turbo Levo. And boy, we've got a lot to talk about. All new frame, new front triangle, new rear triangle, and a mullet setup. And what that means is you get a really short back end for an e-bike with a chainstay length of 442 millimeters, which is pretty short. The geometry has taken design cues from things like the Kinevo, the Stump Jumper Evo, and the leverage curve is way more progressive compared to the previous generation Levo. And just looking at it, you can see that it's built around beefy components. It comes with a Fox 38 on the front, an X2 rear shock, and it's got adjustable geometry. In fact, there's six different geometry configurations you can create with each bike, and there's six bike sizes. So it really does look like Specialized have created a bike that you can customize for pretty much any rider size out there and can suit a real wide variety of terrain wherever you're riding. So out of the box, the head angle is 64 and a half degrees, and that's a fair bit slacker than the previous generation Levo. However, what they've included in the box is a headset cup that you can adjust the geometry. So stock, it comes with a 64 and a half degree head angle, but with the bearing cup that you get, you can actually add or minus one degree. And it's a pretty straightforward change. It takes about five minutes and you simply just take out the stock one. And I've already put in the uh, headset reducer in there and I've reduced the head angle by about one degree. And you can steepen it up as well. So if you're riding on downhill stuff, more enduro focused stuff, the Alps maybe, you might wanna slacken out the head angle to make it feel a little bit more stable out the front. But if you prefer it to be nippy and agile and steer super quick, you might wanna steepen it up a little bit. So I really like the fact that you can adjust the headset on here and it's included, it's, it's a stock part. And secondly, there is a bottom bracket height adjuster just in the chainstay down here and that will raise or lower the bottom bracket by seven millimeters. And it also reduces the head angle by half a degree. Now this is a lot of numbers and essentially you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. You can just ride it out of the box. And in my experience, it handles superb. I'm riding the S5 and at six foot three, or 191 centimeters, it fits me perfectly. The reach is 502 millimeters, and I measured the head angle at 64 degrees, and that's using the headset reducer cup and the bottom bracket set to high.
There's also an S6 size if you need something bigger. That's got a super long reach of 532 millimeters, which is by most e-bike standards, incredibly long. It's radically different from the previous generation Levo. The bike wants for nothing. The 160 mm Fox 38 and 150 mm on the rear, taken care of by the Fox X2, provide incredible support and traction. I've got to say the handling is absolutely beautiful on the bike. A couple of things that really stand out to me. First of all, the mullet really allows the back end to swing round on these steep shoots. Now this is like a very steep section and it's just really tight, narrow berms. And as you're getting your weight over the front, you can feel the back like slide round. It's beautiful and it turns in super, super quick. And secondly, with this beefy suspension, the Fox 38 and the X2 on the rear, you just have the utmost confidence in the bike to, to look after you, essentially. There is so much stability that you have on the steep sections. Nice and slack with the head angle. I'm running it in the slackest position again, and you can just trust it to get down these chutes and soak up all the bumps, and the frame and the kinematics is super progressive. So, the handling of the bike is just outstanding. So like I said, the ride feels so different from the previous generation. Even the tyres are in a different league. This T9 rubber on the front will stay, and when it's worn, I'll be replacing it with the same tyre. It's that good. Battery almost done, time to charge up, and let's chat about the motor and the electrics. So we've got the Specialized 2.2 motor based on the Bros Mag S, 90 Newton meters of torque, and it delivers the torque really low down, and it is very smooth and very natural. And what that means is, when I'm on a steep incline like this, and it is pretty loose, as you can see, it means there's less tendency in turbo for the back wheel to spin out. And you, you don't get those big power surges, you just get natural, really nice delivery of power. So I'm going to try and actually do this climb. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but it's super loose. I've got it in turbo. It's very steep. It's a steep gradient. Let's give it a go. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. And I can feel that low down power kicking in and keeping that back wheel spinning fairly consistently to help me make this climb, which is pretty impossible on a regular bike. <laughs> okay, considering it has a short chain stay, I'm surprised with how well it climbs. Actually, the steep seat angle, the long front center, help you get your weight forward over the front. The rear wheel, 27.5, 29 at the front, and the steep seat angle and the combination of the powerful bros motor with that super smooth delivery of the power mean steep climbs they're doable with this motor but this just gives you gobs of power loads of low down grunt and a super natural feeling and it's easy to start on this loose uh, soil and steep gradients like this are easy to dispatch uh, stick it in turbo and just pedal and keep it smooth and the bike just cruises up to the top. The bike comes with 160mm crank arms and as long as you can keep spinning, the bike will keep climbing. The motor is super smooth and natural and responds instantly to your pedal input. No twitchiness or bursts, just predictable power on demand to take you to the top.
So let's talk about this new TCU, called the Mastermind actually, or TCU2. I have not been the biggest fan of displays on e-bikes because I think often they're bulky and they just kind of look out of place. But I've got to say, aesthetically, Specialized have absolutely nailed it with the look of this bike, especially with the S-Works version having the SRAM access, totally wireless, so all you've got is a couple of cables at the front. But the TCU integrated in the top tube is the best example of integration that I've seen on any e-bike ever. It is super slick and really neatly done. And actually, it is very, very discreet. But there's some really cool things that I like about it that I want to share with you. First of all, it reminds me of uh, like a smartwatch. The brightness of the screen, it's a TFT display, looks like it's really high resolution and really bright. And it's not so big that it's in your face and getting distracting. It's just there when you need it. And really small things that I appreciate, like a battery percentage, that's on there. The mode that you're in is on there. Clock, basic things that you think are insignificant, but they become really useful. And also things like heart rate you can display, or the motor power, or your leg power, or your cadence. And actually, there's 30 data fields. If you really want to geek out, there's loads of different data fields. And much like a smartwatch, if you've got a, a, a Garmin or an Apple Watch, you can customize the pages. So you can choose just one data field or multiple data fields. A couple of other things, it has color coding. So when you're in eco mode, trail mode, turbo or walk mode, it has a different color. And on every single page, that color is consistent. It looks very, very cool. And it actually feels like a smart bike. It's the first bike that I've ridden that feels so integrated as a single system. It feels like a really high tech smart bike. So what's really exciting about this is Specialized say that this is going to be different in six months or a year, as in it's going to be updated. So much like your operating system on your mobile device gets updated in, in one year, it looks different to how it did before. That's exactly what Specialized are going for with this. This total integration from Specialized, I think, is the next leap in e-bike technology. It is super neat and yeah, it is absolutely leading the way in terms of integration so massive well done to specialize it looks so cool and actually i've done a couple of rides when it's getting kind of dark and you can just see this glow here and it feels like it i know it sounds really cheesy but it feels like the bike's alive and actually has character because you can see stuff going on on here and if you like data if you like reading your heart rate or your power you've got all the data fields that you need integrated right in there. One of the other features that I think is quite useful is Microtune. Now what this is, is usually you'll have three modes on these bikes, Eco, Trail and Turbo. And whilst they are totally customizable, to do that you actually have to get your phone out and mess around and you don't always want to do that when you're on the trail. So let me give you an example. Let's say you've got your Eco set at 30%, Trail at 60% and Turbo 100% of assistance but you've got quite a steep climb. You don't want to use turbo, so you're not going to use 100% because it uses quite a lot of battery, but you need a little bit more than trail 60%. So you just hold down the plus and it will kick it to 70%, or you press it again and it'll kick it to 80% or 90%. So you can go up in increments. Again, it sounds pretty small, but it's those small things that really add up and make the difference on this bike. So what I've found is when I'm on my default 60% on trail and I've got a steep hill and I don't want turbo, I'll just smash it up to 70 or 80%. And then I just hold the button down and it puts it into its regular trail mode. Neat little software feature there that they've added. And it's these kind of things that I think Specialized are talking about when they're talking about future updates. a total system integration built around specialized own custom motor firmware with a custom display and an app to tie it all together. And yet the bike looks great, the app works really well and I can see glimpses of specialized future vision when they're talking about the bike getting better over time. 
but my main concern with this is just how reliable it's all gonna be. Search online and you'll find loads of complaints about the motors failing and water ingress on the previous generation bikes. And I know this will be a big concern for a lot of us. And I also know that Specialized have made big progress in running changes to their electrical systems. So let's take a look at what they've done to this new bike. So I own the previous generation Levo, and it is fair to say that it had a fair amount of issues, mine included, with uh, motor reliability and water ingress. Now Specialized say that for this bike, they've paid a lot of attention to make it as water resistant as possible and beefed up the internals of the motor. But I just wanted to show you the way that the battery connects on this and talk a little bit about what Specialized have done to try and protect it. Now, I can tell already that it looks totally different on here. It's got a flap and a little hinge on it. And underneath this, this is where the battery actually attaches to the uh, drive unit on the motor. And it already looks beefier than the last one. I can see there's a load more seals around this door and there's rubber sealing inside as well. And then on the actual battery connector itself, it feels a bit more like a small household plug in terms of the fit and the finish of it. It just seems like it is a lot beefier than the previous generation. In fact, it looks more over-engineered than uh, adequate. And the last one maybe looked a bit under-engineered. So this, I think, it twists around. It, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break to me. It, it looks and feels like it's very well sealed. But obviously, the proof will be in the pudding and riding in the kind of climate that we live in, in the UK, it's wet all the time. But I gotta say, it is much, much better than the previous design. And it's IP rated as well, as is the uh, TCU, the Mastermind TCU. So they say they've spent loads of time trying to beef this up and protect it. Hopefully the issues of water ingress can be put to bed and we won't see that anywhere near as frequently as what we did for the previous generation. And secondly, the motor. Specialized actually call this a 2.2 motor. In reality, it is the same bros motor that was on the previous generation. However, there have been running changes along the lifetime of the motor. Now Specialized say that this motor has a newer belt and that newer belt is thicker and it is a different material compared to the previous ones. And as an owner of the previous generation that had a, a, a failure, um, it's really good to see that they've changed the spec and the design. And again, the proof will be in the riding and touch wood, we'll see this bros motor super reliable and live to a ripe old age, like it should do for a bike of this kind of price. So there it is, the Gen 3 Levo. A combination of great composite frame engineering, kinematics, and total geometry customization. And the electrical integration is seamless. It's neat, sophisticated, and classy. 22 kilos, class leading 700 watt hour battery, and a ride that's as refined or as rowdy as you want it to be. Specialized have created a masterpiece, and I can't wait to ride it again.